morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily show on YouTube on photography, video, streaming, all things photo related. If it goes through a camera, we can talk about it. Good morning. Welcome to the show. For those of you watching live, apologies for the late start. A little tech difficulties here this morning, but we're back on track. And for those of you not watching live, well, you had no idea it was late, did you? So today's show is about a little thing that I found at the Costco. Go figure. I can't wait to show it for you. This is going to be a lot of fun, I think, I hope. I think this is going to be interesting. I think it's going to be fun. Hopefully it works out well. But as you usually, as you know, usually on this show, we kind of tend to make things up as we go. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any things we're going to do in here. If you're, if you're watching the show live and you want to comment, as you undoubtedly know by now, type at Photo Joseph in front of the question and it will show up on my screen with a little at Photo Joseph in front of it. And then I know there's a question for me to respond to and I'll do my best to get to it. I am going to be momentarily stepping out into the other studio. Um, I'm not going to bring the chat thing with me this time, but I'll come back here afterwards and answer any questions. So go ahead and get those questions on there. If you have questions that are related to the topic at hand, throw them out at any time. If you have questions that are not related to the topic at hand, we will be doing a commentary afterwards. So you can uh, stick around and ask those questions then. So with that, before we step out of the room, I just want to say one brief little thing. As soon as I find the right card here, bring this up on the screen. I want to tell you that today's show is powered by FidoNet. Com. Whether you need a domain name, web hosting, or your own virtual server, FidoNet.com are the people to talk to. And to save 10%, be sure to use the code PHOTOJOSEPH on checkout. And we'll hear more about them later. But for now, let's go out in the other room, shall we? Yeah, yeah. All right, heading on over to the other studio. Find the right camera. One of these days, I'm going to actually know where all of my presets are. Um, Uh-oh. Ooh, oh, I messed up. Hold on. Here we go. Studio one. That should be right. There we go. Hey, Ryan, could you make that screen nice and big for me? Um, all right. I changed my presets for the um, for the keynote. I didn't change it back again. Ooh, but that's okay. We got it now. This will work. Hold on. Do I have that one there? Well, I'm definitely going to have to use... Okay, that's okay. We can use these two. Okay. So, here's... Oh, good Lord. I'm trying not to mess that up too much there. Here's what we've got. So, um, someone already said in the comments, if this is about fate lights, I'm not interested. I've already tried them and they're crap. Well... We're going to find out if you're right or not, because <laughs> that is exactly what this is about. So here's the deal. We all know that LED is the future. It's not even, it's not even the future. It's like the present now, right? CFL lights out, um, incandescent lights out. It's all about the LEDs now. And LEDs are getting better, and they're getting cheaper, which is fantastic. It used to be that when you went and bought a LED light, just one of these standard plain old light bulbs, these things would cost... 10, 20, $30 a piece. And so you thought, okay, I'm gonna refit, I'm gonna do my whole house in LED lights. And suddenly it was a thousand dollar proposition. You're going, maybe I won't. People doing one at a time. And that's what I've been doing, one at a time at home as a light burns out, I replace it with an LED. Well, suddenly things have gotten really a lot cheaper. Now I know, so I live in Oregon and recently, actually it was about a year ago, I was at some country fair and there was a, a Basically, the old power company was selling LED light bulbs at a subsidy. They're subsidized by the state government. Awesome. They wanted everybody to go to LED. And uh, so I bought a bunch, and I don't remember how much they were now, a piece, maybe six, seven dollars a piece or something like that. Um, and that was a really good price. And then recently, my local hardware store has bulbs that are like five, six dollars a piece. And then I went to Costco over the weekend, and I found this box of light bulbs. This is, now let's just get a close up look on what these things are here. The company is Fate Electric. This is a 10 pack. These are daylight balanced bulbs, which if you're doing any kind of photography work, that's probably what you want, daylight balanced bulbs. This box is normally 32 or $33, I believe is set on the, on the tin. So that's down to like $3 a bulb, right? Pfft, that's pretty good. But this stupid box was on sale. It cost $13 for this box. It's a buck 30 per bulb. $1.30 per LED light, daylight balance. Now, these are not going to be photo studio massive quality lights, but if you can get a daylight balance bulb for a buck 30, we're onto something here. So now suddenly, LED lights that run cool to the touch, meaning your gear's not gonna get overheated, your room's not gonna get overheated, combine this with a couple of clamp lamps, which at $13 a piece cost 10 times the price of the light bulb, which is pretty ironic, but a couple of these and this, and you've got something, you've got a studio setup. Now I'm gonna, build a quick little lighting setup here. We're gonna shut down the overhead lights here once I start doing this so that we can see the true effect of these lights. And I've got a couple other DIY things here that I've put, pulled together just to kind of really, as much as possible, DIY the show. So we've got a diffuser. Now, I've talked about this thing before. This is a diffusion panel that is simply acetate. You can buy this by the roll from Amazon or any other place. Um, quite inexpensive. I've 
got, you know, I always have a roll of this stuff around. And then the frame here is Windows screen. So if you go to your local hardware store and you can buy, you can buy a Windows screen replacement kit. So this is for your windows in your home to keep the bugs out, that kind of a thing. It's a frame. It comes with four bars and four corners and you cut the bars to size. So I've got a bunch of these varying sizes because they're super cheap to make and very convenient, very lightweight. I just, I think they're really handy to have around. Now you're gonna have to have something to hold these up and I have these clamps here. That, you know, we all know real photography clamps, right? I think I've got, do I have one here that I can grab? Ryan, grab one of the orange ones off of there for me. With the real photography clamps for photography and they're, I mean, they're not crazy expensive or anything, but they're not exactly cheap, right? You know, if anything that is made for a photographer is expensive. And these are awesome, right? They're made of metal, good solid rubber tips on them, very strong spring. These are gonna last forever, right? They are. But in a pinch, you can get ones like these. And these came, again, from my local hardware store. And I think three different times now, I've walked into the store and seen these in the dollar bin. So you may not be able to get them for just a dollar, but I have bought a bunch of these for a dollar a piece for whatever reason. I mean, they're just cheap plastic, I'm sure cheap Chinese plastic construction. I've broken a number of them. But at that price, it's like, why not have a few of these laying around? So we've got all this kind of DIY, mostly from the hardware stores type stuff. Now I am gonna use a couple of light stands here just to hold things together, but you could use anything. You could use a chair, you can use a ladder, you can use a, a, a corner of your wall, whatever. Whatever you can mount things to, that's what we've got. So. Those are the pieces we're going to work with. We've got our lovely model Betty here who's going to be bottling for us today. I've got the GH5 on the tripod ready to go. And let's start building some lights. So first things first, just to put a couple of these in. Obviously you know how to screw in a light bulb, but take the bulb, insert into, no, I'm just kidding. It's kind of like being on the airplane and like, here's how you buckle your seatbelt. Like seriously, if you don't know how to buckle a seatbelt, you probably shouldn't leave the house. Uh, let's see, I need to plug this in somewhere. I did not plan for that part of it. Let's get this out of here. Hopefully not going to break anything else. And we're good there, don't need any of those. Excellent. All right, let's get some light scoring. All right, first steps first, lights. Now, oh, the lights that are on here now are daylight balanced. The lights that are the ambient lights in the room are daylight. Actually, they're all these bulbs. But let's see how this looks. Just on first glance, the color temperature should not be changing too much. You guys tell me, color temperature looking good? Are we good? Color temperature's good? We're gonna assume that's all right. And that's our first light. So let's uh, let's turn some lights off. Ryan, hit the switch there for me. And I, I got something else. I'm going to show you this another day because I'm just so excited about this. But watch this. That's all the lights in the house. <laughs> okay. Let's. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that quite yet. Let me actually set one of these up so I can see. Try not to shine that into the camera. Um, okay. I know it's dark on the frame. That's okay. We are moving faster. We're going to get this set up and. Set this next to the camera. Let's get this up high. And we're gonna start by just shining the light at Betty and seeing how that looks through the camera. All right. Clamp, simple clamp. Clamping a clamp lamp to something round isn't always the smartest thing in the world, but it's what we've got. All right, let's, I wanna get that a little bit higher. Let's get that up there. That'll work close enough. There we go. All right, turn, oops. Turn, turn, turn. But he's got some light on her. Okay, so that's the first step. What, Ryan? Cord is massively tangled. Cord is massively tangled, Ryan. Oh, so it is. That would be why that, excuse me for a moment. Brand new cables. These have not been treated yet. Hey, here's a top tip for you. And I believe it was my friend Chris Fenwick who was often on the show who told me this. Neat trick. See how these cables are all tight and tangly? I think he called it curing them. Take cables like this, power cables, um, audio cables, whatever, cables like this that are thick and bent up. Take them outside on a dry, hot, sunny day and lay them out in the sun. Just stretch them out and let them sit there for a couple of hours. Get them nice and warm and soft and then you can coil it or do however you wrap it up, however you're gonna do. And hopefully that will give you a cable that kind of cools down and remembers that position. Pretty neat little tip there. Okay, let's, uh, let's see what we're we gonna do next. Let me switch over here to the camera and get over to the camera view here. Let's turn the camera on. And there is our simple little light source. Let's get this up here. So let's see how much light we're actually getting. I'm going to go into manual, full manual exposure mode. Let's go take to an ISO of let's say 400 and let's go into full manual here. So we're doing still photography. Oh, it looks like I've got preview turned off, which means, um, where's that? Uh, I think I've got that saved here as a preset, constant preview. Oh, no, that is what I want, okay. Oh, I got a 1.6 second exposure, that would be, that'd be bad. 
All right, here we go, 40th of a second. So we're going kind of a slow exposure here. ISO 400, we need a little bit more light than that. But remember, we've only got one light turned on right now. And not too bad, not too shabby there. All right, so there's our first picture of Betty. Maybe we want a little bit more light than that. Let's get a little bit longer exposure. Now, obviously, at this point, with a single light, this is going to be a little bit too dark. But that's okay. We're going to add a second light here in a moment. But that's one light bulb on there. All right, now let's try... Let's see here. Let us do this. Let me go back to the studio lighting here. I'm going to add a second. Oh, it's not even pointing right at her. Look, it moved. Oh, we're still going to add a second light. Let's go ahead and add a second light to this, get a little more light from her. And we're going to basically do a one light setup, and I'm going to use two. I'm just going to put them both in the same position, and that will allow us to have a kind of one light. And then I'm going to put the diffuser panel on there as well. So let's get this guy in place. Clamp that on, pointing roughly at our subject. Plug that light in. Turn this thing on, and try not to pull this. I have these clamp light up screws. Oh, there we go. Now we've got a pretty good amount of light on her. Let's try this again. I'm gonna go back over to my camera view. We can see now we've obviously added a whole bunch of light on there, so I can take my shutter speed down to a slightly more reasonable level. And 50th of a second, you know, for a subject that's not moving, I think that might be okay. Straighten out this camera a little bit, maybe raise up just a touch there. I would go vertical, but then it looks funny on the video, so we're not gonna do that. And now let's try adding a diffusion panel. Let's see what we get with that. So I'm gonna take this nice little simple diffusion panel here, and I'm not even gonna hold it up in place. I'm just gonna, I mean, I'm not gonna clamp it up. I'm just gonna hold it in place for you so you can see the difference. So let me switch back over to this. And hit the camera input there, and let's see what we got. So there's a much softer, yeah, nice soft, Light on there's definitely lost exposure a little bit. Let's go down and brighten that up a little bit there. And we're not looking too shabby. Not looking too shabby. No, this is just, this is obviously a very quick, very silly little demo here. But I think that it is worth pointing out, go ahead and turn those lights back on. I think it's worth pointing out that with a minimal amount of money, right, a buck and change a piece for these, 10 or so dollars for the clamp lamps, super cheap little things here. You can build this for next to nothing. You can put together a really low cost little mini studio, and why not? And I mean, I use this kind of stuff in my big productions all the time. The lights that I just showed you, these with clamp lamps, are actually what are illuminating the entire studio right now, just for ambient working light. But it also gives us a little bit more light to shoot in, balanced with the big overhead lights here. You've seen those before. And uh, overall, I think it's a pretty good experience. Now, someone had said that they don't like these lights in, in the comments, and I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what the problems you've had with them are. I haven't had these for very long, so they may not be very good. Yeah, hmm? he said what? He's like, I would like you to okay. do a test sometime. I would like you to put a radio near the bulb and listen for RF noise. I have had some LED bulbs that kept my garage door from re receiver from hearing them. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you guys could hear that, but he's saying, <clears throat> that, who, who is it that's giving the comment? Aaron Slunk. Aaron, Aaron is telling us that he's had LED bulbs where you get RF interference and they've actually kept his garage door from opening. That doesn't sound terribly good. No, I don't know what we could do. Well, here, let's try this. This is radio. Tell me if you're hearing anything. I'm not hearing anything in my ears. So I don't know, that definitely doesn't sound good, but also, didn't that be kind of like F against FCC, FC, FA, FCC, F FC something regulations? Some federal commission uh, regulations, if they're interfering, that would be bad. But in the situation like this, if the light that you're getting is good, good enough, then why not? So this is obviously not a comprehensive, in-depth review of these light bulbs. I just wanted to show you what you could get on a very quick moment, what you could do for a simple little lighting setup for very, very little money. I'm crazy impressed by how inexpensive these things are. One point to note, these are not dimmable. If you buy this exact same pack, but in the, the warm color tone, those are dimmable. So I don't know why the daylights are not and the other ones are, but whatever, I want a daylight, don't need them dimmable, we're good to go. All right, let's head back into the other room. <clears throat> and that, is pretty much that. So let's talk about what we uh, what we just saw here. Let's talk about what we're doing. But first, let's have another thank you to our sponsor. Today's Photo Justice Photo Moment is powered by Fidonet.com. Whether you need a domain name, web hosting, or your own virtual server, Fidonet.com are the people to talk to. With access to more than 400 top-level domains, you're sure to find the right domain for your project. Or do you need to host a website? Fidonet.com are specialists in web hosting. With more than 20 years' experience serving websites, 
and the folks at FidoNet.com will be able to help you get your website online in record time and at an affordable price. FidoNet.com, where those in the know go, and those who use the, photo, the code PHOTOJOSEPH on checkout save 10%. All right, let's see what's going on in the chat room while I was away. Mm-hmm. I'm going to scroll back here. Let's bring the chat up. And let's see here. Oh, doo -doo. Here we go. Oh, that's the off-subject one. We'll come back to that later. Scroll farther down. I guess there weren't that many comments while I was away. Stuart Schaefer, what is the wattage of those lights? I'm sorry. I didn't say that. I, I probably could see it on the box maybe, but it's their 100-watt equivalent. Um, Ryan, do me a favor. Go grab the blue box for me. Their 100-watt equivalent. Uh, I f we're going to find out exactly what the actual wattage is because you know how it is. LEDs are much lower wattage for an equivalent brightness to what you got out of a standard incandescent light bulb. Trevor's saying the ones you use are usually about $10 to $15 each. Thank you. These guys are um, non-dimmable, 15 watts. So it's a 15 watt light, but um, 100 watt equivalent output. And it says that somewhere in here as well. Oh yeah, 100 watt replacement bulb. So there you go. Hopefully you can see that. I just realized it was partially off screen. Anyway, 15 and 100. Those are the numbers you're looking for. Trevor says, I used those plasticky, I used once those plasticky ones with the boom stand. I'm assuming you're talking about the clamps. It snapped like last year's Halloween candy. I don't use those anymore. I wouldn't use them for really heavy, strong stuff, for sure. I'm talking about those cheap plastic clamps. But for little stuff, they work great, and I use them all the time. I, I have more of those than I have of the heavy-duty metal ones, so I think they're great. Aaron Sloan, oh, doing the test about the LED and the interference. So um, I don't know, tell me what other test I could do. I mean, I just did that thing. Maybe that's the wrong type of interference. I'm not gonna go install these in my garage door because I don't have one. Um, but uh, I mean, you know, it's, they are working pretty well so far. So we'll see what they are. You're a ham radio operator. Um, you've done a lot of study in LED bulbs. You get what you pay for. Interesting. Okay, so Aaron, then it, for regular normal folks who aren't ham operators, um, is this a problem? I mean, is this the kind of thing that's going to interfere the normal daily life? You said your garage door opener, and obviously a lot of people have garage door openers, and if it just means not putting an LED bulb in your garage door opener, I think we can accept that. But uh, if it's interfering with other things in your day-to-day, -day, then by all means we should know that. But again, I would think that these things would be a little bit more regulated than that, but heck, you know, what the heck do I know? Mm, let's see here, what else is going on? Um, uh, Trevor's saying I must try those around the house. Be curious to see how long they last too. And what do they say on here? 15,000 life hours. I think it's just somewhere like a 10 year um, average lifespan or something like that. I mean, that's kind of up to last up to 13 years. That's a lot. That is a lot. Yep, and these are all LEDs. Well, there you go. FM radio or AM radio receiver is the thing to put next to it. Hmm. God, do I even have? Uh, I don't have one of those. <laughs> like the only actual FM AM radio is in my car. I guess I could take a, a clamp lamp on an extension cord out to the car and listen if it gets interference on the radio. But, it, I mean, that's something that's so not a part of my life. I'm not, it, it wouldn't even concern me. But thank you for bringing that to our attention, Aaron. I think it's very, very interesting and useful to know. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's wrap this one up, and then we're going to come back for the commentary. Before we do, though, I just want to remind you of a couple of other things that are going on. We've got um, the, well, let's see here. This just went up yesterday, I do believe. Oops, wrong slide. Can we bring that up here? This just went up yesterday. I have uh, finished, at least for now, the live training for Affinity Photo. We wrapped it up with Affinity Photo for iOS with the export module, the save as or export module in there. So we talked about that yesterday. If you are an Affinity Photo user, make sure you go ahead and check out that video. And we are now going to move on to another app. Um, if there's something else that I missed in Affinity, I'm sure you guys will tell me, and I'll come back and revisit it. But I think I, mean, I haven't covered every last little feature, but I think I've covered uh, enough of what people need to see and want to see. Coming up next, I'm excited because we're starting a whole new app. We are going to start using, start playing with Polar. Polar, <clears throat> excuse me, is a really cool image editor that is on iOS, macOS, Windows, Android, and even Chrome. I don't know how they do that. Um, and it's virtually identical across all platforms, which is really, really remarkable. So it is a, it's a different type of photo editor. This is more like kind of the filters and the simple corrective adjustment, but they also have localized adjustments. They have some really nice presets. I'm excited to play with it. It's, I've used it a little bit before. We actually had them on our podcast year and a half ago or something, so the app has evolved quite quite a ways since then, so I'm really excited to get into it and see what that thing has to offer. So be sure to stay tuned into the channel to see that. In the meantime, let's break out of here, and we'll come right back for the comments. If you're watching uh, not live, then the link to the comments is going to show up on your screen in a moment. If you are watching live, then stick around. We'll be right back.